So I bring a lot of first timers to the range and I love that. But getting to share my passion for the shooting sports, I can't tell you how stoked I am. Natalie, a pleasure. So good to meet you, Julie. <laughs> so tell me, what have you done? What experience do you have? I've shot all kinds of guns, okay. but I haven't shot competitively before. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a couple little basic things so I have an idea of where you are because mm -hmm. you said you have some experience and I want to see just how much that is. And then we're gonna get into the little specifics of that shooting sport that we're gonna explore and so you can knock it out of the park. I am very ready. <laughs> I love it. All right, so. Because you do have experience with 9mm, mm -hmm. we have selected a brand new Smith & Wesson MP core for you. Ooh. Which is one of the guns that I compete with. And what I'd like you to do is get a good feel for the grip and the trigger. And we're going to dry fire a couple times so you can get used to it. So right off the bat, I could tell that uh, Natalie was going to have a little bit of a struggle with trigger control. And that's so natural because I could tell she's competitive and I know she wanted to go really fast. And what we needed to do is we needed to reel that in. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna do one more test. Rack the slide again. Now, extend on the target. Don't let that fall down. Ooh. Go ahead and squeeze. All right, excellent, you passed. <laughs> this is something that you can do at home when you're practicing to work on that trigger control and you'll get it every time. All right, so the gun is loaded with five rounds. Don't be nervous. I just want you to shoot five shots in the middle of that brown paper target. Okay. Okay, whenever you're ready. I was nervous. Um, I've only shot my family with um, maybe a friend or my boyfriend. I felt like I had a lot to live up to, especially with Julie watching me. I wanted to not embarrass myself in front of her. Um, she was very patient with me. Much, much better. All right, what'd you do on that last shot? Go ahead and bench it. Do you know exactly what it feels like when you don't do it right? Yeah. And when you do it right. Well, right, look at that quick improvement. I think so, let's go take a look. I love it! <laughs> look at this! So, we know you can do that. Okay. Now let's do the next step. In the shooting sports, each of the targets that you just shot requires two hits. So that's what we're gonna introduce now. I'm gonna introduce multiple targets with multiple shots. Okay. Now I really wanna talk about your stance because shooting just slow fire into a target, that's one thing. But now we're gonna introduce that element of speed. Right. So when you stand, take your right foot back a little bit. And I like to stand really wide, really aggressively, because this way I can move my body. And because we have such a big sweep on these targets, I can just use my knees to move around quickly. Yeah. Are right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Stand by, go. So we had four targets set up, and I wanted her to get used to the idea of shooting two on each and transitioning the gun, watching the sights to those targets. At first, we noticed that same issue with her trigger control on the very first target, but then she cleaned it up towards the end. So we redid it, redid it, until we were at the point that we felt confident that she was ready to go into the next step. Awesome, go ahead and bench it. That was excellent. Jasmine escaped a dangerous situation unharmed, but not everyone is so lucky. Autumn Parkin, a rape and stabbing survivor, knows this to be true. Rather than letting her past define her, Autumn has taken her safety into her own hands by learning how to safely handle a firearm. She's the perfect mentor to make sure Jasmine feels confident and prepared to do the same. But just getting her license to carry isn't going to cut it for Jasmine. So we'll be giving her another challenge by running her through a shoot house training scenario. Today, she's in for a big surprise when she learns exactly what that means. Hi, Jasmine. Adam, so nice to meet you. I've heard such wonderful things. I've, I've heard great things about you as well. So today we're here in Fort Worth, Texas at mm -hmm. Defender Outdoors, and we're gonna be going through a shoot house. We're gonna be using yep. simunition. It's a real firearm, uh, but they use sim rounds, which are like paint markers. I'm looking forward to it. Shoot, ready? Ready. Execute. So we'll start off this room as a, a shoot, no shoot. And what we'll have her do is come into the room, identify the targets that she needs to engage and keep those that are supposed to be safe, safe. All right, we'll do it again? Yes. Okay. Execute. 
For the first scenario, there were stationary targets. That's something that I'm more used to. And cease fire. Everything else was completely unexpected, out of my realm of knowledge. The second situation we're going to do is a restaurant type situation. We'll have an actual individual person come in, start to cause some trouble. At that point in time, our shooter will have to decide what's the best course of action for me in this situation. 911, there was a shooter, a shooter that came in. Then cease fire. The next scenario is that's when they added an actor. And he's yelling and he's threatening her, and that just went from a night and day difference. Everybody get on the ground now! Call 911, I'll kill you, I swear! See what happens! Get on the ground! I've gone through some houses in the past, so I kind of came into this knowing what to expect. Uh, but every time is different. It's a training opportunity. You never know how it's going to go, especially in such a dynamic environment. And the final situation we're going to do is a home invasion. We'll start off with our actor sitting in the chair, enjoying a night of TV. Somebody's going to beat on the walls or beat on the doors trying to break in. Uh, and then we'll see how she reacts to that. 911, there's a break in. I was watching from behind glass, and I was intimidated. It, it definitely stirs emotions just watching it and watching this scenario because you know it happens in real life. But it's something that I think as a woman you need to be prepared for. You need to know how to handle yourself in that kind of situation. Awesome. Great job. <laughs> Let's reset. Where are you? Where are you? type of training is extremely important for everybody who carries a firearm because you don't know how you're going to respond until you're put in that situation. If you don't drop it, I'm going to shoot it. Cease fire, cease fire. Good job. <laughs> nice job. Whew. So Jasmine, even though I'm an experienced shooter, going into something like this can be very intimidating and a little overwhelming. Yeah, it was overwhelming watching. <laughs> but it's so important. Uh, this, this is, you know, the proving ground where, where you can test and see uh, the things that you need to work on. Yeah, great. You did an incredible job. So you've left huge shoes to fill. I mean, even standing up there knowing it was fake, I felt that rush and I felt that fear, but it's practice. And yes. so thank you again for going first Absolutely. and showing me the road. Any time. <laughs> Aaron, it's so fun to get to come out to your world, your fishing world that you yeah. love. Right? I'm happy to have you out here, get back to the roots a little bit. Yeah. Why did you decide that you wanted to try hunting? You know, I think that being outdoors is kind of something that's been a hobby for me for the past couple years. I feel like nature is something that once you really get outside, it's so hard to want to go back inside. So it's yeah. something that I think is a valuable life skill to have. I totally agree. And I know you've discussed it with some of your friends. Some of them have really been excited for you, and then you've been kind of getting some pushback too. The thing is, guns are a controversial subject, and people are going to have very strong opinions. I'm not going to change their opinion in a five-minute conversation. They're never kind of intelligent discussions. It's normally like, oh, an emotional thing. Exactly. One of the ways that I've found that's really practical in a mm -hmm. way to kind of combat the ignorance of what we're doing when we're out hunting is to really inform people about the conservation piece. In fact, hunters do more for conservation than any other group in the country. Oh, wow. I know. There's certainly no bloodlust, as some people would probably imply, or maybe even and outright say it's not like that. It's about taking care of the environment. It's about mm -hmm. filling your fridge. Right. And it's also about education. So I think you're pretty well set up. Do you have any questions? You know, I think the hardest part, and you kind of mentioned this, is you don't know what the experience is going to be like until you're there and you're ready to pull the trigger. And so it's so hard to ask what that's going to feel like. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. It's certainly appropriate and completely understandable to have a lot of nerves. I certainly did the first time I went hunting. Mm -hmm. and, and realistically, I do every time I go hunting because it's always a new experience. It's always a new environment. Sure. But you know, one thing that I would emphasize to you that uh, even Julie and some other hunters told me when I began is that you don't have to take the shot if 
you don't feel comfortable. Okay. A successful hunt does not necessarily mean getting an animal. You're out there for a goal, certainly, but you don't have to, if you don't feel like you have a good clean shot, mm -hmm. that is perfectly okay. And you can wait till the next experience. And hogs are so rampant here that you likely will get another opportunity. You know, as I started this experience and I was really setting goals for myself and what I wanted to get out of it, I've kind of defined success as taking all the right steps that get me up to the hunt. And so if I'm there, it's, it's successful for me. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think you've really got the right mindset and mentality to have a successful hunt as you've defined it and mm -hmm. possibly even take a hog as well. So I'm so proud of you for embarking oh, on this journey yeah. and we'll be checking back in with you very soon on all of your training. I know, I can't wait to tell you about it. I can't wait to experience it. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing, you'll be great. All right, so now we have a totally different looking target. Yep. This is what we call a metric target. That one's daunting. <laughs> it is, and you'll find that a lot. Basically, the tan colored targets are shoot targets. Okay. White are penalty targets. Okay. So if you hit those, then you get the miss for what you didn't hit. Got it. And you get a penalty of 10 points. Ooh. So that's a very bad thing. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna incorporate picking the gun up off of the table. Okay. Because you never really start with a gun in your hand. Right. We're gonna load you up. Are you ready? Ready. Stand by, go. I wanted her to work on acquiring a good grip, bringing the gun up, and shooting three targets. So she was able to incorporate all of those perfect control skills we'd been working on to harder targets plus a gun handling skill, building it all together. There you go, <laughs> all right. Awesome! First couple shots, what'd you do? I pulled it too fast. Yes, that's gonna yep. be a theme. That is your thing. I know. Okay? I need a, it's okay. You slow down on the first it. one. Yes. But everything else and the hard target, you got your hits on. Awesome. So that is perfect. But what I love is you picked up the gun quickly, you acquired those sights, you were a complete natural. Okay. All right. We'll do it again. All right. All right. Let's do it. Are you ready? Ready. Stand by. Go. Julie showed me that before I can get to the speed aspect of competition shooting, I have to focus on the technique. Once I started implementing what she taught me, I really, really saw improvements. So how do you feel about this? I feel really good. Good. I was really nervous coming into today. Uh -huh. I feel like the tension had kind of built up over the past few weeks. Yes. But um, after the first couple shots that I took, I got a little more comfortable. And something that's very important for you to realize is that you're probably gonna feel nervous a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I still get nervous. So, it, <laughs> And that's part of the fun of it. That's the exhilaration yes. of the shooting sports. You get such a, such a high from it. So we have set this up so that you get to shoot with Randy Rogers as well. I'm excited. She is a teammate of mine. She's an incredible shooter. Yeah, she's great. She's going to take you along step by step. Okay. And then we'll just keep progressing, keep progressing for that big match. All right, I'm ready. Next time on Love It First Shot. What we learned today in the fly fishing clinic is so easy to apply to, to kind of what we're going to learn in hunting. You know, I have to be of a competitive nature, otherwise I wouldn't be able to succeed. 